So here we are, 2015. Um, luckily, I've, uh, this is my second time. Um, I was back in 2014. But I think one of the greatest challenges that we've got this year is the Internet of Things. And we've already heard a number of uh, speakers talk about this going forward. Um, the real challenge going forward here is that as people and organizations try to interface with all sorts of different technologies, and we're talking about from manufacturing, where they've got programmable controllers, logic controllers in manufacturing organizations, exposing those to the internet so that they can manage them, they can be more effective and those sorts of things. The real challenge is, well, how do you protect those sorts of environments which were never designed to be protected in the first place? They have very old operating systems. They're very difficult to patch. They're very difficult to maintain. So those are the fundamental challenges. And then the, the more advanced stuff that we're seeing um, with regard to how you manage your environment within the home. Um, and we've already seen uh, from Naomi's uh, presentation there that there are serious issues around the security of those. And, and really some of the major challenges are you know, trying to address those around the application security. You know, we are seeing major problems with um, the way applications are developed and brought to market that they have, in most cases, inherent security issues within. And also, they have vulnerabilities which are susceptible to some very basic attacks. He says. Um, so this statistic is, um, it really highlights the problem, and this is from the Office of National uh, Statistics, saying that 93% of the large organizations in UK PLC um, have had a major cyber incident in the last 12 months. So, so that means only a few of you in the room haven't. Um, if you are not in that area, then the challenge is that you probably haven't identified where those issues are in the business. Um, you know, another area is cloud. You know, this is a, a fast-moving area, really important for business, for elasticity, um, bringing on services. My colleague is going to be talking about this later on uh, this afternoon around cloud and, and how this can be secured. But it's one of the, the real challenges in terms of how do I manage that environment, how do I secure it, authentication, authorization, encryption, management of user activity and those sorts of things, really a major challenge going forward. Um, bigger area really is, as I said before, is around the mobile platform. Um, you know, last year, my phone was, was you know, a BlackBerry. It was very good, but it wasn't very powerful. This year, I've got an Apple device. I, I could run most things from this Apple device. In fact, I could do the presentation from this device. The challenge going forward is that a lot of the applications that you liberally download want access to all sorts of different things within your, your uh, device itself, your geolocation, your contacts database, and all those sorts of things. You know, do those applications really need that? And those are the questions I think we need to start asking around our security and our privacy actually going forward. Oh, ooh, sorry. Ooh, jumping around a bit. So the last point there was um, quite pertinent statistic. It's not because we don't have security. Lots of organizations have invested a lot of money in security. The challenge is that they've bought lots of different things. And they're not seeing the aggregation of that over all of those various different environments. So the challenge is, how do you actually understand what's going on? And that's where you see noise. You know, there's lots of things going on. Where do I need to go to solve that business problem? Where do I need to go to find out where I need to action that environment? And the challenge is that the hackers out there, you know, we call them hackers, but basically it's a business. You know, th this is a multi-billion pound business now for organized crime. Organized crime making more money out of cyber fraud than they do out of drug dealing. So, so this is where they make their money. And they are using very sophisticated analytics They've got very sophisticated dashboards. They're looking at, at how um, effective their targeting is being, how effective their profiling is being. And if you're not doing the same, then you have some serious vulnerabilities that you need to look at within your organizations. There is a plethora of information out there. I mean, this is just one of the forums. You know, there are literally millions of blogs out there telling you how to go and do things, how to go and attack organizations, how to go and look at and, and, and attack specific vulnerabilities out there. Um, 
you know, th there are all sorts of information out there. I mean, th this, this is a business in its own right. They have SaaS-based environments. You can buy things, put it into a cart. When you go to buy, uh, to go to checkout, you get an option as to whether or not you need some botnets and those sorts of things. You know, this is a fully fledged business. The difference is that they don't have to play by any rules. We have to play by certain rules. They don't have to play by any rules at all. And, and that's the fundamental difference, that, that there are a lot of organizations out there, that fraudulent organizations, that are making millions and millions of pounds out of this. You know, fr from from organised uh, activities into financial organisations. Um, this is a snapshot of some analysis that uh, we've done internally. Uh, we host about 5,000 different organisations around the world, and this gives you an idea as to to where those sort of hotspots are. I mean, clearly the the big area there is malicious code, is malware, and that, that won't come as a surprise to to most people. But actually, it's the unauthorized access, internal users. You know, it's still a really big area is internal users abusing privileged access, doing things that they shouldn't really be doing. So there's all, there's all that threat to actually take into account as well. Um, Citadel is, is a very interesting way that, you know, we're looking at now designer malware, as it's being called, because um, this was specifically designed to target um, petrochemical industries, uh, manufacturing sort of uh, process control type environments, but it's now morphed into more targeted areas, and through cloud sourcing, you can actually say what functionality you want as part of the next attack profile. You can then download those different attributes when you're attacking a particular organization. So the actual uh, shell code of itself is, is very resilient and very robust against detection in a lot of environments, and so how that actually then is used as a transport mechanism to then deploy a lot of other very sophisticated tooling around that. So again, you know, this is, this is we, we've gone away from the area of signature-based detection. This is really anomaly and behavioral analysis, heuristic detection, because these technologies that I'm talking about will morph as, as they change and go into different environments. So it's pretty nigh impossible to use conven conventional signature-based to detect them. So, what do we need to do about this? Um, the challenge really for the CIOs is, is in a number of areas, and they, they, we term those as terms of the mega trends. Um, advanced threats, which we talked about, cloud, mobile, compliance is a huge area and is, uh, is, is growing, but probably one of the bigger challenges to any organization is the skill shortages. So how do you actually get people in the environment to understand what's going on and to be able to make those business decisions. So technology is great. You need a good process around that. But you also need people that understand what they're doing and actually can take business decisions. So, so you either make the technology easier to use or you employ more people. Now, employing more people is a real challenge because at the moment, you know, the, 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 the pay that is being offered for highly skilled security analytics people is is very high, which is good for them, but from an organization perspective, when you're trying to address these very complicated threats, is a serious challenge. So a new approach, really, you need to start, and we've talked about this before, in terms of breaking the, the chain and the cyber attack. I mean, there are a number of areas where you can actually do that. But you need to look at a, a holistic view in terms of looking at it from a network perspective, looking at it from the end user perspective, you know, how does that incorporate within your bring your own device? Security analytics at the front end, how do you pull all of that information from the various different technologies and marry that against the governance policy that you've got? And then the next area really is, you know, what do you do in terms of the forensic capability? And, and the last piece is, you know, what do you do in terms of a disaster recovery, a cyber disaster recovery? Do you have a plan in place? Does that include marketing? Does that include your PR people, well, it should. You know, the eventualities should well be planned in advance. So, you know, the real challenges here are, you know, we talked about before, is, is the, the area that you need to look at and the amount of information that you've got coming into your networks is excessive. Um, you know, there are over 250 different protocols that can connect um, from your environments out to the internet. Now, the hackers will use all sorts of different protocols to subvert the systems that you've got, because that's what they do. They, you know, they're very good at doing that. 
So how do you then move that, that sort of boundary out to the uh, built your own devices, so people that are bringing devices into the network? How can you provide secure containerization within those environments? How can you manage the devices in terms of redacting information and, and making sure that the corporate assets are in a secure environment and yet allowing the user to leverage technology which is going to um, give them a better uh, usage within the organization. And then the intelligence piece is, is really becoming pretty fundamental. I mean, when I go around and talk to a lot of organizations, really their first thing that they're looking at is, is how do I get an understanding as to what's happening on my network? I've got lots of stuff out there. I've got lots of tooling. But what I don't have is a holistic view as to what's going on. And that's a real challenge going forward. Um, because the last thing you want to do is to have a monitor that just sees a sea of red. You know, that, that's not going to help. You know, that's going to tell you you've got lots of problems. It's not going to prioritize. So, so how do you take governance around that? How do you actually boil that down into issues that are really actionable and you need to take um, specific action against? And then the recovery side, you know, the forensics, it's all very well to detect that. Okay, what do you do then? You know, the last thing you want to do is to spend a lot of money in getting a lot of people in very quickly that effectively is going to distribute the, the digital footprint in terms of your forensic capability. So you need to be very pragmatic about how you do these things and how you actually look at how your organization was breached. And the other side to that is then having insurance against it. So, so having some sort of emergency response that you actually can invoke and you can get you know, skilled organizations in to actually help you deliver that. The other thing around this is you need a lot of intelligence. You know, this thing is a very fluid environment, so you need to be bringing in information that's pertinent to your organization. So Chris was talking about with CISP, um, you know, lots of organizations out there which will give you focused information which will enhance your analytic capability specific to manufacturing, specific to retail, specific to manufacturing and, and that sort of thing. Um, last couple of slides. Um, X-Force report, X-Force is our research capability. Uh, we've got a very good white paper out that was published um, Monday of this week that talks about the latest threats and susceptibilities. Um, that's uh, available on our stand, so, so please come round and uh, we can share that with you. We'll also be making an announcement um, after lunchtime with regard to other issues around uh, mobile devices, so, so please take time to, to come round to the stand as well. So thank you very much. So uh, didn't get a red card. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> a, a fascinating insight into some of the, uh, the real world issues in cybersecurity. Uh, time for one question. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Know that well, how uh, they're, they're very clever in terms of how they move that around. And you know, uh, one of the other challenges that that we're seeing now is actually intellectual property that's been stolen. <clears throat> that's been sold back to organisations as legitimate uh, information. So, 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 so any sort of asset, whether it's uh, monetary mm -hmm. or IPR, it is is a value. And, and con you know that that's and, and that has a monetary value associated with that. The amount of money that you know they, they can take in in one particular um, uh, attack can be tens of thousands within small businesses. I mean, I talk to small businesses, and and they've had their uh, payroll folks specifically targeted, and they've had malware specifically uh, deployed into that environment, and they've taken you know ten, twenty, thirty thousand pounds, which. Okay, it's not a great deal of money, but to a small organization, that's a significant amount of money. To a larger institutions where a typical attack over a 12-week period can result in a 35 to 40 million pound uh, payout for a specific attack. So there's a huge difference in terms of those uh, scales. But the thing to bear in mind is that, that when organizations can be specifically targeted or they can be generically targeted, 
Specifically, there's lots of information about you, me, and everybody around here on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn. I can craft a very good email that has a very high probability that you would click on a link. And once you've done that, that's, that sets the clock going. Now, it might not happen for a while. You know, the malware may stay you know, in, in your environment until something else triggers, and then it will do specific things. It may escalate its privileges. It may be in your environment. Typically, malware can be in the environment for over 200 days before it gets detected. So it has a lot of time to, for, for the people that are controlling it to assess what they can find, what they can do, how they can move around, what are the high asset targets that they can go for. So this is when it comes back to intelligence and analytics. You know, anomaly and behavioral analysis. What's different today than yesterday? That's the real critical thing that, that organizations need to address. Yeah, yeah. I mean, th there are there are issues where you know the, the third party cycle um, has been hit. So, for example, a large organisation outsourced all of the management of their mobile devices to a third party. That third party was compromised, and the threat actor then deleted uh, all of the mobile device data. Mm -hmm.